In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to paint brick walls using three different types of material representing three different cost levels. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial in which we will talk about uh, model houses and structures for your model railroad. I, I got a, a message on the Patreon feed from a, a guy called Christian Ashton. Uh, he's living in Germany and he's uh, just getting started on a, on a new uh, age of scale model railroad and he, he kind of want to kickstart the, the the work with the buildings uh, for, for his layout so you know he can make preliminary placement but also he wants to weather them so they look you know more realistic than the ordinary plastic kits and I would say <laughs> Best thing to get kickstarted on 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 uh, buildings when working starting with a model railroad is actually to go out on eBay. Uh, there are tons of really decently priced ready-made kits out there, and well, <laughs> some of them do not look all that good, but it doesn't really matter because you know you can buy a lot for very little uh, amount of money. So. You know that that's what I have done here. So I will show you, uh, you know, what you can do with the buildings and to make them look awesome anyway. And Christian said, "Hey, you have four videos <laughs> about weathering buildings." And I browsed through my my uh, uh, playlist for that, and I realized that a lot of that information is outdated. So this is a video where I will take some of these uh, eBay houses I bought for this video and um, uh, paint a brick house using both a, a really cheap simple method and then move over to acrylics and lastly oil paint. So you have the whole spectrum from <laughs> very cheap to super expensive uh, materials but basically using same method and you will see the difference here. So uh, it's it, hopefully it's a, it's a good guide for anyone who, who wants to get started and uh, want to paint brick walls for your model railroad. So here are the houses I bought at eBay last week. I think the total price was about 30 euro, including freight. As I said, we're gonna paint brick walls. And now I notice that they have actually assembled this wall upside down. So, okay, I have to <laughs> adjust this. It's not all that easy to assemble plastic houses. But hey, I just turn it back where it should have been and let's get started on the painting. We're starting on the rock bottom pricing. Uh, that's the kids color blocks. It's a kind of paint block. You dissolve this in water and you get the color it has. Now this is a bit mixed. It's actually a white one. The total cost for this is $2.50 including the paint brush. The more common one which I've been using throughout uh, most of my videos is this one. It's acrylic paint mixed with alcohol, water and brushed on with a, a bit more expensive uh, brush but it's almost 10 times as expensive. So but it's I will use the same method and you will see the difference. Finally we will also go for the really fancy oil color solution. Here is uh, Aptilum 502 light mud so we're going for that last besides from these three methods i've also presented a one which i painted bricks using these umbral colors animals from humbral and uh, well these have been prohibited in uh, europe at least so they are no more accessible because they contain dangerous substances so let's start out with a kid's color uh, this is a bowl of water to reduce the water tension, I'm using just soap. This is hand soap, but you can also use uh, your dishwashing agent uh, that will do the same trick. So I'm mixing that into the water here and now the water tension should be gone. So then I apply some water on my paint powder block here. The mix of white and black here gives a kind of gray tone which is fine for the grout uh, in between the bricks in this wall here so i'm just using this uh, very low cost uh, 
brush from the DIY store. It's nothing fancy at all. And I'm kind of applying this paint over the entire wall. As you see now, there are a lot of air bubbles forming, which is a bit of a trouble when using soap instead of alcohol. But they can be removed using a hair dryer like this. So I'm just drying the surface of my hair dryer. And then once um, partly dry or dry enough, I form a pillow of uh, either a piece of cloth or in this case bathroom tissue. I can wet it a bit on the surface and then I just wipe the paint off the surface of the bricks. Now this will partly also remove the paint between the bricks so there is most often a need to give this a second go, meaning we apply another layer of paint, use our hair dryer, wipe what's landed on the surface again with another piece of paper, and then it looks like this. I want to add some black also here, lower part of the wall and along the edges. So I'm also now wetting the black paint block and you see I have some black in the paint brush and I wipe most off on a piece of paper then we can start to kind of dry brush this onto the lower part of of the building and thereby I think we have like finished the effect here so let's have a look at what $2.50 gave us it looks like this in the microscopic view so well still some bubbles in the joints there but you know looking at the building from a distance you can never tell that there are bubbles in there and compared to non-painted it's uh, at least if i i'm to choose i choose this one which it has been painted so let's get over to the 10 times more expensive uh, method which i use most often it's a basic acrylic paint with a paintbrush and alcohol. The alcohol I'm using is isopropanol. Since we invested 10 times more, I will also add a drop of yellow to soften the white tone of the grout somewhat. So it's not that death white, it's more of a soft white. So here are the proportions. I have mostly white paint. I add that half drop of, of yellow and get a kind of well cream white and then a tiny tiny amount of black into that and we get a kind of warm gray tone for our grout now in the bowl next to it here i'm adding isopropanol uh, this is a kind of low cost product which is used for in you know, to prevent freezing in carburetors of course it's cheaper than than the standard isopropanol which is kind of expensive. So here we have the wash. If you have too much paint and too little uh, thinner, it would look like this. And it's all wrong, of course. So you have to wipe it off and add more thinner because this is what it should look like. Apply this paint with the alcohol, or I would say it's a wash uh, in spots or streaks in corners or edges, and the paint will float in between the bricks and form a color colored grout so but again we need to wipe some which has landed on the surface off with um, with a piece of paper or a piece of cloth so in that respect it doesn't uh, uh, vary much from the previously used methods and materials and in the same manner i'm adding black uh, wiping most off uh, on a piece of paper and then I'm adding it to the bottom part of the building. Now since I have a bit of smaller more precise brush I can add it also to the under the edges in streaks under the windows. So a good paintbrush or a set of good paintbrushes is uh, a very good investment and it doesn't have to be all that expensive so this is the final result using the acrylic paints well there are no air bubbles in between the bricks and the bricks are slightly cleaner 
and uh, well from a distance you can't really see the difference between this and that so this is the low cost kits color or paints uh, whilst um, the other side is our acrylics so let's try out this oil paint now this is my favorite method really it's oil paint thinned with odorless turpentine but the cost is double compared to basic acrylics so i put some on a bathroom tissue here this is the odorless turpentine which we're gonna use as a thinner for the oil paint so i'm pouring a few drops of this into my mixing bowl and then i take the paint and i dissolve it into to that thinner and now we're ready to apply this and as you see here uh, oil paint with the uh, odorless turpentine floats incredibly well in between the bricks in the wall so you just have to add a drop in the in the edge and you will have paint all over the wall and almost no cleaning except where i put my brush so this is uh, really a, a premium method but of course 20 times more expensive than the kids colors now if you want to remove the the paint which has landed on top of any bricks you dip a flat white brush into uh, odorless turpentine wipe most off on a piece of paper and then you can like clean the top of these uh, stones wipe paint off on a on a bathroom tissue and then continue to clean and the final result using oil paints looks like this so this is uh, very valid if you like weathering a uh, engine or a locomotive compared to this this is not typically what you want on such project but for this type of project with a simple plastic kit it doesn't matter you can just as well use the really low cost method and it will give you the same result all right so <laughs> for weathering buildings well you don't have to invest all that heavily into uh, materials but you know, you know weathering more delicate things like engines and and things like that locomotives then you probably want to have the better materials uh, for that hey did you know that this channel is totally dependent on the sponsors like uh, christian ashton from germany who became patron just a few days ago uh, he got a tab, of course, to ask me questions of whatever comes to mind. Uh, he does that through the Patreon feed. So if you also want to uh, support the channel and maybe have some questions, uh, please join Patreon uh, for like one, two dollars per month. Uh, or make a one-off donation uh, using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And if you're not yet a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe. Enable that little bell and you will get the notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya. <laughs>